Well, a different kind of science story now. Uh, Car uh, California Senator Barbara Boxer was in Emeryville yesterday stumping for new legislation. She wants the FDA to require that genetically engineered foods be labeled. It's pretty simple. We deserve the right to know what's in the foods that we eat. And parents certainly have a right to know what they're feeding their children because their children are the most vulnerable. But what exactly are genetically engineered crops and what are some of the pros and cons? KQD Science Senior Editor Andrea Kissick narrates this report. We all have a right to know if our food is GMO. Hi, are you voting yes on Proposition 37? Despite the defeat of Proposition 37, a majority of Bay Area voters supported the measure and many are still leading the charge. West Marin organic dairy farmer Albert Strauss was a spokesperson for Prop 37, and he supports a similar initiative that Washington State will vote on this November. There are solutions out there that don't need genetic modification, and I don't feel it's natural. I don't feel it's, um, we know enough about it, and yeah, in the, I'm basically against it. But as the political battles continue, biologists are using genetic engineering as one more tool to improve crops. Engineering allows them to change crops in more precise ways than conventional plant breeding. Classical breeding basically involves taking the female eggs from one plant and bringing them together with the male parts of another plant. Uh, and then all that genetic information gets mixed up. With genetic engineering, it's just moving very small parts of that genetic information and pulling it out in a very precise way and then pasting it back into another plant. At the University of California, Berkeley, biologist Peggy Lameau is genetically engineering a cereal called sorghum. 300 million people in Africa eat sorghum porridge every day and often little else. And so what you want to do is make whatever it is that they eat, sorghum in this case, uh, a complete nutritional package. But sorghum is difficult to digest. So with initial funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Lamo is tweaking a gene in sorghum seed so that it produces 20 times more of a protein that makes the plant more digestible. When we're ready to genetically engineer sorghum, we will open up the, the seed uh, and we will pluck out that very tiny little immature embryo. A member of Lameau's team mixes a group of embryos with a liquid containing a type of soil bacterium that transports the tweaked sorghum gene into the embryo. The process is similar for other crops. Over a period of time, you select only those cells that got that genetic information, and it grows up as an amorphous mass. It sort of looks like a bunch of, of grits on a plate. And then, miraculously, using plant hormones, you can cue that mass of cells to say, remember, you're a plant. And it goes, oh, yeah. It grows up, and every cell in that plant now will have that piece of genetic information that you put into it. In the mid-1990s, the Missouri-based seed company Monsanto was the first to sell genetically engineered seeds. Monsanto genetically engineered one category of crops to fend off agricultural pests. They designed a second category of engineered crops that could resist their Roundup herbicide. The idea was to kill the weeds but not the crops when Roundup was sprayed. With these new Roundup Ready soybeans and other crops, farmers could more easily use Roundup herbicide, which was cheaper and less toxic than other herbicides. Today, about 90% of the sugar beets, cotton, corn, and soybeans grown in the United States are genetically engineered. But organic farmers who use no synthetic pesticides oppose genetically engineered crops that encourage spraying. Pesticides, herbicides are not sustainable. They're not healthy for land and they're not healthy for people and cows. Organic farmers like Strauss don't use genetically engineered seeds or ingredients. So if you're not buying organic, what genetically engineered foods might you find at the supermarket? Some soybeans, corn, and sugar beets end up in snack foods, soda, and cereals. 
A little yellow crookneck squash and zucchini, some varieties of Hawaiian papayas, and some sweet corn are genetically engineered to resist pests. And 20 years ago, scientists also engineered a tomato, this time to satisfy the consumer's palate. The flavor saver was created in Davis by a biotech company called Calgene. The goal was a tasty tomato that would remain firm for transportation. So if they would stay firmer on the vine, then you could let them start to ripen on their own, and they would start to get all the tomato flavors that um, you would get in your backyard. The tomato was labeled and popular, but it wouldn't stay firm on the vine, and the venture was short-lived. The tomato was important because it was the first genetically engineered food to be taken to the FDA for approval. What the company wanted to show was that the tomato was safe. That was the bottom line. Oftentimes, using this technology, a dozen genes or, or half a dozen genes will be inserted at various places um, in the tomato genome or any plant genome. So the potential there was that the gene could land in a tomato gene and disrupt it, thereby mutating it. Genetic alterations could, for example, lead to a spike in unwanted plant chemicals that could cause health problems. So biologists look in each plant to see if any genes were disrupted. If anything looks odd or different or looks like it might have an issue, then we don't use those plants. So we choose those that we're confident that they're not going to cause changes uh, to the food quality or the food safety. Lamo writes and gives talks for the University of California. She doesn't take any money from biotech companies for this outreach work. I, I have personally gone through the safety studies that are available to look at uh, on the crops that are out there now. Uh, and my conclusion was from looking at those that I did not see any indication that there were health safety issues associated in a specific way with any genetically engineered food or crop that's out there now. The World Health Organization and the U.S. National Academies have stated that the genetically engineered foods available today are safe to eat. Despite assurances, activists are pushing for labeling laws at state legislatures and ballot boxes. Retailers like Whole Foods have said they plan to start labeling GE foods. And Monsanto has signaled that it might be willing to talk about a labeling standard. Well, I think it's in the best interest of the industry itself, actually, to label. If you have nothing to hide, um, go ahead and label. People want to know, uh, go ahead and tell them. Next week, a half-hour documentary dives deeper into the topic. Tune into Next Meal, Engineering Food, on Wednesday, May 8th at 7.30, right here on KQED 9.